For Sunday, March 10th, you've found the Georgia Gang. And topping our agenda today, a major indictment at Atlanta City Hall. The state's airport takeover bill advances. And in the House, it's a fight over abortion. Some of the stories up for grabs on the Georgia Gang. From the Fox 5 studios, the Georgia Gang starts now. And we're glad you could be with us. Uh, we are taping the week of what the General Assembly calls Crossover Day. So we'll try and sort that all out for you. We're also going to have, I think, a major surprise near the end of the broadcast. Mm. But we begin with something we are experts in. Atlanta City Hall corruption. We know these stories. We know all the players. We can pronounce the names. And this week, B.J. Pack, the U.S. Attorney for North Georgia, indicted one Jeff Jafari, uh, a businessman with longtime connections, deep connections, to City Hall and, most importantly, the airport. He was indicted on 51 counts of bribery, theft, etc. And, Phil, I'm going to let you start because you're the ranking expert on this particular <laughs> issue, especially as it relates to the airport. Well, that's right. And uh, just to break down maybe two issues, yes, you talked about this indictment that came. We're in year three of this federal corruption probe of the airport. <coughs> And uh, as we've always talked about, uh, it's a cesspool of corruption and bribery and bid rigging. I brought with me today the committee report that the uh, state Senate did. They voted to change the uh, oversight of the uh, airport from the city hall. It's controlled by the mayor, especially the procurements, over to a statewide authority. This is over the past few decades. It didn't start under former mayor uh, Kasim Reed. This has been going on for, for decades, and it needs to stop. And that's why the state Senate did what it did. BJ Peck will have more indictments. And I had to laugh at one thing. Former Mayor Maynard Jackson in the late 70s, when the corruption story started coming, he said, oh, that's old news. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the 1970s. Lori, Lori, the particulars are that this Jeff Jafari, who's a contractor, uh, some of the juicier details are that he paid uh, the former city purchasing director uh, in cash in men's bathrooms of steakhouses. Mm -hmm. And he also told him, you know, don't, um, you, know, you know, really don't turn me into the feds. Like, cover it up. This right. is our story. We're going to stick to the same story. And, you know, the indictment, it was all about the timing this week because of crossover day. And because we knew that the state Senate was going to take up this airport takeover bill. And out comes this indictment of 51 counts. So I think the timing was really, really bad on the city's part. And Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms has said this is equivalent to declaring war on the city. So that nice relationship between the state and the city, gone. Well, and you've got, you had uh, State Senator Burt Jones, who's bringing the bill up there, and he's holding up the front page of the newspaper with the 51 count indictment from the well of the Senate. Yeah, I don't really know Senator Jones that well. I think, Phil, you know him pretty well. I don't know, you know, I never played golf with him or played poker, but you know, sometimes there's an old saying, you must rather be lucky than skilled. And I don't know if it was just pure luck or coincidental that the day before he presents his bill, um, you know, the AJC comes out with this in indictment, which we've heard about over two and a half years ago. Well, we remember the raid on Jafari's office, yeah. all that. We've seen so, his records carried out from yeah, Sandy just, just for our viewers, this is not, you know, this is new news, but it's not new, new news, right? <laughs> just like um, Maynard But it's not said. old news like Maynard Jackson said. <laughs> but I think that the, the big thing here is, listen, it's an ongoing federal investigation. He is the latest person to be indicted. I'm going to say it for... You a couple of people who tease me for saying this, let's not rush to judgment. <laughs> um, but I think that the timing of it, I agree with you, Lori, is what's so suspicious uh, and a lot of people are sort of questioning. Um, but look, he also did say, him being BJ Pack, that we're wrapping up. He said we're hoping to wrap this investigation up soon. So that's a little bit of good news from Mayor Bottoms and people in the city council and others who really just want to move forward and put this behind them. Right. Well, Alexis, uh, uh, yeah. go, go ahead. Well, I, I wanted to just put in that even though he was indicted for the bribery charges, there was no new person he was bri bribing in City Hall. Right. So that was it's a, true. It's only the it's, purchasing it, director who's it, serving a federal prison term. Maybe as we someone speak. over in DeKalb County. Well, I was just going to say that's the that was the question I was going to yeah. make to you, Alexis. An unnamed DeKalb County official. Right. That was a, a, something that came in in the, the what the S fine print of small, this. Uh, it was in the, really you're right. Print. But you know, Dave, when we were talking about the airport takeover bill, it passed the state Senate, but we don't know the fate in the House. And we know that Speaker Ralston came out uh, very late on crossover day and said, you know, I have yet to hear the case made that the state has to take over Hartsfield-Jackson. So that was a big announcement coming well, from the Speaker. I, I would agree with Speaker Ralston. I haven't heard the case made that it has to, but it sure as hell should. <laughs> but I mean, I, come on. Why? But I, state I, authorities work. 
state authorities work. Look at the Ports Authority. Yeah. Look at the Georgia World Congress Center Authority. But those were created together at the by beginning. Democrats. They were created in the beginning Correct. of the situation. But they the, the airport has been here for 80 years. You don't hear any. More. You don't hear any. Uh, uh, corruption stories out of the out of out of the Georgia World Congress Center Authority, but they are political appointees. Right, that's right. fine. And we had stories about that this week. But back to the cab. The one thing about the cab thing that's interesting. It's also alluded that it you know it, it happened four years ago. So just for our viewers, it could be someone who's previously already been under investigation as or, well. So uh, it, also or it could be would, a new person. Uh, loves I, which would probably mean, knowing your DeKalb history, <laughs> that it could be anybody who served for the DeKalb government. Yeah, but I think yeah. the, the the kind of little nod with DeKalb, I think was something that you know, for our viewers that was an investigation that happened four years ago. You're so rushing before, to judgment on that one. No, no, I'm just saying before the new commissioners, right. the and, new CEO and came in on. there some dispositions of cases, bribery and uh, what is it, theft and... Correct. And I'm going to have to uh, defend the U.S. Attorney B.J. Pack here. I, I, I don't think, I think he's an ethical person. I, I, I would be shocked I if there so. was any evidence whatsoever, and there is none, no, I that I this was accuse, politically timed. Well, you said the timing is funny. I don't think that he did what he did. I just asked if, if Senator Jones was a lucky man. I never spent time playing well, with him, uh, poker, we, golf. You got to jump. What's yeah. it look like in the House, in the airport takeover? Well, there, therein lies where the, the battle is going to be, to Lori's point. You know, you got a speaker who said he has not been convinced that the state needs to take over a well run, efficient, and world's busiest airport. So now you're going to see the whole narrative shift. You're going to see a much more aggressive posture from the and city of Atlanta. Notably, the, co the governor has not yet weighed in on it either. Correct. I thought well, it was interesting that Delta Airlines, who obviously has a sweet deal with the city, didn't show up uh, at, at a lot of the committee meetings. Uh, none of the senators that I have talked to were even lobbied by Delta uh, before the uh, vote. I but thought Ed, that was Ed interesting. Bastion has said previously. Ed's going to work with whatever happens. No, no. He said that no, they opposed. Keep, keep, keep it with we the got, city. We got to get out. Well, yeah, he's got a sweet deal. I get that. <laughs> we we got to get out. One thing that we ought to caution people about, even if it passes the House and is signed by the governor, it's a two, three year process. It's very complicated. Right. And, and gonna, a, it's going to go straight to court, too. A source of mine <laughs> said it will be like Brexit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll be that complicated. All right. Uh, when we come back, more on the General Assembly, including that heartbeat bill and a protest over abortion. Stay with us. Have a question or comment for the Georgia Gang? Email them at georgiagang at foxtv.com. Okay, we're going into hyperdrive now because, as I told you, we've got some surprises coming up on the broadcast. So in the House yesterday, it seems to me that the major uh, item was the so-called heartbeat bill. We should explain that that is a bill that uh, prohibits abortion after a baby's heartbeat has been detected. Mm -hmm. And it would sort of change the time abortions were legal from the current 20 weeks of pregnancy to six weeks. Lori, that's a... That's a tight window. Uh, and the Democratic women, I, I think they were all Democrats, so I'm not sure if there were some Republicans involved, but the Democratic women turned their back on the speaker. I've never seen that in my years covering the General Assembly. Obviously a very emotional, very divisive issue. And they turned their backs, and then I think some of them also walked out to say, this is why we oppose this bill. Um, this is, I think, one of the most um, controversial bills to come out this session, for sure. And I think, you know, last week we talked about the governor, you know, really supporting this trigger bill, that if Roe v. Wade mm -hmm. were overturned, then it, they would outlaw mm -hmm. abortion. That was kind of set aside. And Governor Kemp this week, holding true to his campaign promise, where he said he wanted to pass the most restrictive abortion bills he in the country. He issued a video. He didn't he do did. it in a No, there are three exceptions. And that's when I think the tide really changed. <clears throat> And, you know, a lot of the Republicans got behind the bill. Well, there's three exceptions, too, I think we ought to tell the viewers. Uh, uh, it wouldn't um, apply in the cases of uh, rape, incest, or even the life of the mother is in danger. So it's Which caused some Republicans to vote against it because of, those right, because of those exceptions. Right. But I think it was really terrible to do this. I mean, it's like heartbeat. It's not a heartbeat. It's, it's the function of the thing. The fetus is not a baby. It's not a human being yet. Well, this is where the Democratic the Party argument. is on a slippery right. slope here, and I think Democrats are going to lose a lot of people in the middle uh, when it comes well, to politics beyond, because of this very radical approach to, uh, radical, to abortion the on demand. The fact is that people are going to get abortions for whatever reason, and they need to be safe. Bill Clinton said it ought to be safe and rare. Do you not I, I agree with that? I well, agree with that, but it shouldn't be. It's not rare. But I think a lot of this talk in states like New York and Virginia and Vermont about, you know, killing the babies after they're born really gave momentum to the right. Oh, it, it does. 
you've got two extremes here. You've got the Democrats who essentially have voted in other states for infanticide, and now you have this six-week notion from uh, conservatives here in Georgia about the heartbeat of the baby. And uh, I think the public is going to side more with, with some centrist point of view on that. Right. And, and, and it may be that abortion is in the mind of the general public, not to me, but they ought to be safe, legal, and rare, as you said, Phil. Bill right. Clinton real quick, so real quick, real quick stat. Out of 93 people who voted for it, only 13 women voted for it. So we're talking about what Democrats need to be on a slippery slope for. Republicans who want to get back women voters, and mm -hmm. suburban women particularly, thir oh God, only 13 women out of 93 people who voted well, for it. Well, you love polls there, and then the polls are showing a huge shift over the last decade. Young people uh, are now more pro-life than pro-abortion and the average electorate including the center not just the right is more pro-life. We've got about a minute here to deal with this. Let's, there was so much that happened on crossover day. Uh, let's try to just go around the table real quickly. Uh, medical marijuana, right? Pass yeah. the house. Pass the house. Big, big victory for them. Uh, yeah, and, big, big, uh, to, to use the oil for, for right. treatments. But it's also yes. going to be a big boom for business in and the it's state. Cultivation. It's right. cultivation. It's cultivation. Because you can grow it here. And film Confederate monuments or monuments in general. That's exactly right. Senator Jeff Mullis uh, actually got a bill passed through the state Senate that would protect uh, on, on public and private property all monuments, including Confederate monuments, and throw the book at these vandals that are going around cemeteries and things like that. Is there any movement on uh, 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 horse racing or casino gambling? Yeah, I think it was kind of uh, halted a little bit. Uh, I think it moved to a study committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, every year we've had conversations about it, but I think it'll be ongoing. I interrupted you. I was going to say hate crimes passed the House. Hate crimes passed the House. Big. First time ever in Georgia. And one of uh, Georgia was one of only five states that had not had a... That tells me if it passes the House, it will pass the Senate. All right, we've got to get out. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll have a bit of a surprise and a little flip of the switch. Stay with us. <laughs> Join the discussion on the Georgia Gang Facebook page and watch past episodes on the Georgia Gang YouTube channel. This is not an easy day here on the Georgia Gang. Many of you have heard after four decades in the business, this is Dick's final show. He's heading off into a much deserved retirement. It's the end of an era for sure. And here's a look at how it all began and how Dick has made this show a success for decades. Dick Williams, from the studios of Fox 5 Atlanta, here's the Georgia Gang. And good morning, we're glad you could be with us. For four decades, Dick Williams has been a mainstay in Atlanta's journalism world. I think when I moved here, that sign on the Darlington building on uh, Peachtree Road said uh, 1.5 million residents in the metro area. And I don't know if the sign's still up. I haven't driven by in a while, but aren't we at about uh, 7 million now? Dick started his career for CBS Radio in Albany, New York. After suffering through two winters there, he knew he wouldn't stay. After stints in Connecticut, Baltimore, and Miami, Dick made Atlanta home when he got a job at the NBC affiliate here. The AJC then came calling. People would say he went back to newspapers. No, I went to what I really liked first and best and, uh, and had a, a wonderful career at the Atlanta Journal. I was business editor, city editor. Uh, I was TV critic for a while, which got me in the column writing game, and then I was a columnist for almost 20 years. Right. And, uh, and that led to this other foray into television, which is a, as an analyst. The year was 1982, the height of the missing and murdered children's cases in Atlanta, the start of the TV show that would eventually be called The Georgia Gang. It was based on the success of Nightline, which was, the, was all the rage in television in those days, instant commentary and reaction on the day's news events. The idea was to diffuse the tensions that surrounded the missing and murdered children's case. There were, uh, the city was just rampant with racial tensions and, and, and rumors, rumors, rumors. We would spend most of the weekly broadcast just on that case initially. As a suspect was arrested, charged, and so forth, we began to talk, talk about other topics, and we became sort of what we are still today on the Georgia Gang. The whole idea was to disagree without being disagreeable right. and to bring all sides of an issue into the discussion. And I think over uh, the 36 years that we've been on the air, we've succeeded in that. As the producer and host of The Georgia Gang, Dick sent out show topics on Thursday nights. The goal has always been to take viewers beyond the headlines. Our job, as I see it, is to bring that 
coverage of government policy and politics to an audience that's eager to receive that, to hear that. For us, it's as much fun to figure out who's behind a bill in the General Assembly mm -hmm. or what the city council's really up to than it is what they did. We seem to attract a good-sized audience. Right. We certainly have a ton of regular viewers who kind of set their clock by us yeah. on Sunday morning. Those viewers enjoy seeing the civil discussions from panelists on opposite sides. Dick has never been one to hide his Republican views. I'm clearly on the right, on the conservative side of the aisle. Uh, I, I, I'm liberal on some issues, uh, such as race, because I live in Atlanta. Right. And uh, my friends who don't live here, conservative friends, think I'm a little squishy. Off the air, Dick still writes for the paper he owns, the Dunwoody Crier. He enjoys spending time with his family. His wife is former ABC News correspondent and Brookhaven Mayor Rebecca Chase Williams. They have two daughters, one who is married and one who is soon to be. While Dick sometimes plays the part of referee on the show, he also played one in real life, refereeing high school basketball games in Georgia for 30 years. But it's his observations and analysis in the game of politics that will truly be missed. I think we're the most divided we have been since 1968. What's changed, in my view, is that that era was an era of protest. I call this the era of anonymous comment. And I think one of the worst things about the Internet is that people are able to say outrageous things uh, behind a pseudonym without using their name. To me, there's a level of viciousness and profanity in all of it that just makes my skin crawl. And that raises the temperature in the room. For 40 years, though, Dick has reminded us that while we may be passionate in our views, we can be civil and respect one another. As Dick focuses on retirement, no doubt Atlanta will feel the loss of its patriarch of political analysis. I just hit 75, and uh, that seemed to me to be a, a nice jumping off place, three quarters of a century. And I've also got some health issues that I want to take on, and I got to take care of myself. And, uh, and I realized that at my age and with some health problems, I'm not going to be able to put into it what I need to put into it to make it work. I think we've stayed true to our mission through uh, a number of great, really bright contributors. And I'm just the last man standing of the original bunch. When you're 75, you can look back and say, well, that's a job well done. Let's move on. We've heard from a number of former contributors to the Georgia gang since Dick decided to retire. One of them, Dick, Rick Allen, shared these thoughts. Quote, the reason he was such a successful host for such a long time is that he has the affability and magnetism <laughs> of an Irish barkeep. <laughs> you just enjoy his company, like to listen to him, and want to be his friend. We couldn't agree more. Godspeed. Tom Houck says, for the first time in over four decades, I won't have my liberal friends calling me on Sunday complaining about you. <laughs> it's been a great ride. Sparring with you has been a pleasure. Can't imagine you're hanging it up. I'm sure you have plenty more to say. Good luck, pal. And Martha Zoller says, Dick made me a better journalist and a better Georgian. I will forever be indebted to him for the opportunities he gave me and the lessons he taught me. Best wishes, Dick. And from Jeff Dickerson. Dick, you've been my friend, teacher, and sparring partner. You've been a lot of sparring partners <laughs> <laughs> for 35 years. <laughs> 35 years. Congrats on a long and storied career in print and TV news. Keep that stop clock in your head, and Godspeed to you, Rebecca, and the girls. And Matt Towery, Fox 5's former political analyst, reached out as well, saying, thanks, Dick. You were simply the best. We couldn't agree more. <laughs> Well, thank you, Lori. That was quite a piece. The, uh, you and Russ Spencer and the, the anchor chair uh, doing that piece on me. I'm just flabbergasted. Uh, a lot of old pictures. I hope I don't look as old as I felt as I looked. <laughs> you know, you said four decades. It's actually been uh -huh. 55 years as a reporter. Wow. And I covered my first TV story uh, the day Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. Wow. <laughs> 1969. Yep. Yep. Wow. Summer, of, summer of 1969. I've been around, and that was up in your turf, Albany, New York. That's right. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it's been, it's astonishing when you think that you've been looking at your roll decks and making your calls and all that sort of thing for 55 wow. years. That's a, that's a Started out writing sports for a penny a word. 
Really? Dang. <laughs> Which is a terrible thing, by the way, because it encourages bad journalism. <laughs> <laughs> because you got to keep, keep going, writing. Keep That's going. Right. <laughs> to get you up to when, a buck. You got to know when to stop in well, journalism. Keep going. To get up to a buck, you got to write. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Yeah. What a witness to history, though, Dick, you've been. And um, just coming up, we're going to have some closing thoughts from the current gang members. Stay tuned. It is not a going away party without cake. So Dick, congratulations on your decision to retire. We're very happy for you, but this show will never be the same. Well, on, on the matter of the cake, somebody knew what they were doing because that's <laughs> almost the Georgetown blue and gray, <laughs> as, as my tie is, which we, I thought was fitting. You had to get I have that my in there, priorities, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Georgetown first. But that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah. We yeah. just kind of want to run the table and get some parting thoughts about this being Dick's last show. Well, I'll, I'll go first, Dick. I attempted to do the best I you could did, today. You did a great job. To, uh, to, to tie a bow tie in your honor. But lot. I would just say this, you know, growing up as a young kid in Athens, I used to watch this show all the time. And it was a reason why I felt like I needed to get involved in politics. And so that day when you called me and asked me to be an alternate uh, for Jeff Dickerson, it was probably one of the proudest moments of my life. I knew then that um, a little country boy from Athens had made it, but you know, you're gonna be missed, I agree with Lori, the show will never be the same without you. I will miss our um, sometimes very animated text messages with each other <laughs> uh, and voicemails and, and emails, but you know, we're here for you. Um, we will continue to call on you and then you just look at the outpouring support from Facebook. It just shows you how many people in this state love you and uh, cherish you and we wanna continue to be there for you, brother. Thank you, pal, I right. really appreciate it. Well, you are a legendary figure, uh, not just in Atlanta journalism, but uh, Georgia journalism, uh, both in print and in television, as we saw. And uh, it was in 1998 when you contacted me. I was over at the Augusta Chronicle as the editorial page editor. And uh, you said you needed some help disseminating the truth here on the show. Oh. <laughs> so I, um, I jumped in my car. I jumped in my car and drove over here for several times uh, before I moved to Atlanta. And so I appreciated that opportunity. And then it was 2000. 2003, just a year after Alexis, that uh, I became a regular panelist. So I, I think I would uh, agree with everybody here, too, that you created the show, and it's a great dynamic that I think is unique. And I, you're not supposed to use that word unique a lot in journalism, but the fact that you have people from different uh, points of view, lifestyles, and ideologies here on the show. And I think people realize the secret is out that we really are friends, but we can fight like cats and dogs over the issues we truly believe in. So thank you for creating that for Atlanta and well, Georgia. I really created Phil. Thanks for the comment. Well, I you really have shaped it. I shaped that? it. Yeah, uh, you can I, edit my remarks. Originally, it began as kind of a, you know, uh, it was a, just a collective idea. Uh, but I think I've been here in this chair for so doggone long that it has taken on my shape. You're right. Are you two actually disagreeing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want. To, I don't editor. want to take. I don't want He's to take away editor. from. I don't want to take away from Tom Hauk and Bill Ship and yes. Rick Allen and all the people who were here in the beginning, uh, back in 1981. Remember, we've been on three stations, so it's had to kind of evolve. But you've stepped up your game with all of us here. Right. Oh, I think so. In all modesty, I think we've, right? uh, we've got a pretty dang good panel right we here. Do, we right? do. We Alexis. You know, I don't get yeah. all complaints. Uh, well, and I want to say, too, that I was thrilled when I got the call. It was actually Rick Allen who called me first, and I couldn't make it because Rick, Rick and I used to be desk mates at the Atlanta Constitution 100 years ago. And I remember the walk on the moon, too. <laughs> 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 but I just want to say that you have really shaped the the tone and the tenor of the show by making sure that you elicit all the different viewpoints and I appreciate being the bleeding heart liberal on the show and having a say about some of the things that we can disagree and agree about. Yeah, and, and, and what better than to, you know, people don't remember the Journal and Constitution competed Yes, absolutely. Same ownership. We competed. Absolutely. I was at the Constitution. And I was at the Journal. That's right. Yeah, and, and we fought a lot. <laughs> we did. And, and we were also expected to beat the other. That's right. Absolutely. The public never bought that, but we competed. Yeah, I we was did. glad to have a Constitution person on the broadcast. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard for a Journal guy to say, but nobody else will understand that. Right. <laughs> Well, Dick, um, I, I can't thank you enough for all of your support. Um, I don't remember the man on the moon. <laughs> it, was actually, it was actually, I covered the funeral, just to show you the time, I covered the funeral of a young man who was killed in Vietnam mm. on the day, and my line, of course, was that his casket was lowered into the ground. Wow. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what a witness to history you have been, and I really feel like you have shaped politics 
in this town and in this state and what an asset you have been to all of us. You have been so kind to me, the new oh. kid on the block. So oh, I thank yeah. you for your Great. support. Um, there's no way I can fill your shoes. Of so. course you can. <laughs> even if you went I'll to Syracuse, try, even though you went to Syracuse, <laughs> you'll do it. That's Syracuse, Georgetown. And darn right. Yeah, but just maybe some parting thoughts, Dick, from you. Well, uh, I, I think uh, I, I kind of spanned several eras of journalism. I mean, I went from print to television with black and white film uh, to today's whole digital environment and satellites and, and, uh, and I've seen the demise of the typewriter and the teletype, uh, but I've always tried to keep a sense of humor and not to take it too seriously what we do. And I, I guess we're getting a wrap here, but I want to thank the originals, Tom Houck, Rick Allen, Bill Shipp, Jeff Dickerson, Betsy Weltner, Marilyn G. Wax, uh, the Zoller, a bunch. And uh, also the people of Dunwoody who have kept me uh, alive at the cash window the last uh, 23 years. <laughs> and that's it. I got it. You sign it off. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, everybody.